Hello and welcome to my channel. I hope you enjoy this story. I'm going to try and upload a new story each day. The Clockwork Garden Holly Arnold had always been captivated by the delicate balance of nature and machine. As a botanist, her passion lay in a hybridization of organic life and artificial constructs, a curious obsession that had driven her to the Isle of Wight. She had heard rumors of a hidden, ancient garden nestled deep within the island's remote woodlands. This garden, it was said, held secrets that blurred the lines between life and death, metal and flesh. The journey to find it had taken months of research, whispers in dusty libraries, and meetings with eccentric islanders who spoke of the place with a mixture of awe and fear. Eventually, she had come across an old, crumbling map in the attic of a dilapidated seaside cottage she had rented. The map was marked with a single word, scrawled in a spidery hand, revanchally. Beneath it was the symbol of a key intertwined with the serpent, an ominous image that unsettled her even as it intrigued her. She had to find this garden. It was everything she had ever dreamed of a place where her wildest experiments could take root. The night Holly set out was cold and moonless. The path through the woods was treacherous, twisted with gnarled roots and brambles that seemed to reach for her ankles. But she pressed on, driven by an inexplicable urgency that gnawed at her insides. When she finally reached the garden, she stopped, breathless and trembling, at the side before her. The garden lay in a natural hollow, surrounded by towering trees that blocked out the night sky. A low, rusted iron gate marked its entrance, creaking ominously as she pushed it open. The air was heavy with the scent of oil and decaying leaves, a strange, metallic tanda clung to the back of her throat. Holly stepped inside, and the gate swung shut behind her with a resounding clang that echoed through the trees. Inside the garden, the plants were unlike anything she had ever seen. They were a nightmarish blend of the organic and the mechanical, their stems and leaves interwoven with cogs, gears, and intricate clockwork. Flowers with petals of tarnished brass turned toward her, their centers glowing with a faint, sickly light. Vines, embedded with sharp, gleaming thorns of steel, coiled around the trunks of trees that looked more like machines than living organisms. Holly's heart raced with excitement. She had stumbled upon something extraordinary, a forgotten relic of a bygone era when science and magic had been one and the same. She moved deeper into the garden, unable to tear her eyes away from the plants that seemed to hum and whir as she passed. Her mind raced with the possibilities of what she could learn here, of what she could create with this knowledge. As she wandered, she noticed a peculiar statue at the garden center, a tall, humanoid figure made entirely of clockwork. It was draped in rusted vines, its face hidden beneath a mask of ivy that seemed to have grown from the metal itself. The statue's eyes, two gleaming orbs of green glass, stared out and blinking, watching her every move. Holly shivered, suddenly aware of how silent the garden had become, as if it were holding its breath, waiting. Ignoring the unease prickling at the back of her mind, Holly knelt beside a particularly intricate flower, a rose with petals of copper and silver, its edges razor sharp. She pulled out her tools, eager to take a sample, but as she reached for the stem, the rose jerked back, almost as if it were alive. She hesitated, her hand hovering above the flower, when a sharp pain shot through her palm. She gasped and pulled back her hand, staring at the thin, precise cut across her skin. A single drop of blood welled up and dripped onto the soil. Instantly, the ground beneath her feet shifted, the earth groaning as if awakening from a long slumber. The rose twisted, its petals opening wider, revealing a set of needle-like teeth that clicked together hungrily. Holly stumbled backward, her heart pounding in her chest as she watched the plants around her begin to move. The vines snaked across the ground, the flowers turning their razor-sharp petals toward her, their metallic edges glinting in the dim light. The clockwork mechanisms within the plants clanked and whirred, the sound growing louder, more frantic, as if in anticipation. Panic surged through her, and she turned to flee, but the garden had come alive. The vines lashed out, wrapping around her ankles, pulling her to the ground. She screamed, clawing at the earth, trying to free herself, but the plants were too strong. They called around her, tightening their grip, their thorns digging into her flesh. The statue at the garden center began to move, its joints creaking as it took its first steps in centuries. It loomed over her, the green orbs of its eyes glowing brighter as it reached down with clockwork hands. Holly thrashed her mind racing with terror, 
but there was no escape. The garden had her now. The statue's hands closed around her, lifting her into the air. She could feel the cold metal pressing against her skin, the vines tightening around her limbs, immobilizing her. The garden seemed to hum with energy, the plants quivering in anticipation. Holly's blood dripped onto the soil below, and the ground seemed to pulse with life, the plants growing more frenzied with each drop. The statue's mask of ivy shifted, revealing a face beneath gaunt, skeletal, and inhuman. Its mouth opened, revealing rows of sharp, metallic teeth, and it spoke in a voice that was more a rasp of gears than speech. The garden hungers, Holly's scream echoed through the garden as the plants descended upon her, their razor-sharp petals slicing into her flesh, their vines constricting. The last thing she saw was the statue's face, its green eyes glowing with an unnatural light, before the darkness swallowed her whole. The garden fell silent once more, the plants returning to their dormant state, the clockwork mechanism slowing to stop. The statue stood motionless at the garden's center, its eyes dimmed, the mask of ivy creeping back over its face. The ground beneath it was stained with blood, which was quickly absorbed by the hungry soil. In the days that followed, Holly's absence was noted but the islanders merely shook their heads. The Isle of Wight was a place of old secrets, and those who sought them often paid a steep price. The garden remained hidden, its gate rusted shut, waiting for the next curious soul to wander too close, unaware of the ancient hunger that lurked within. For in the clockwork garden, metal and flesh were one and the same, and the line between life and death was thin as the edge of a blade. Holly's disappearance became another whisper on the wind of the Isle of Wight, a ghost story shared around the crackling fire by those who knew better than to venture too far into the island's wilds. But for the few who dared to ask questions, the tale of the botanist who vanished in search of the fabled garden was more than just a cautionary tale, it was a mystery begging to be solved. One such person was Dr. Julian Ashrout, a colleague of Holly's and a fellow botanist with the reputation for being as relentless as he was brilliant. When Holly first confided in him about her obsession with finding the clockwork garden, he had dismissed it as nothing more than a fantasy, an overzealous pursuit born from too many hours spent poring over dusty tomes. But as the weeks passed and Holly failed to return, something gnawed at him. Her notes, the fragments of research she had shared, began to form a puzzle on his mind, a puzzle he couldn't resist. Julian arrived on the Isle of Wight under the pretense of continuing Holly's work, but his true intentions were far more personal. He felt a gnawing guilt, a deep sense of unease that perhaps he had underestimated her discovery. The islanders were tight-lipped, offering little more than cryptic warnings when he asked about the garden. But Julian was persistent, piecing together Holly's last known movements, her inquiries, her final, desperate entries in her journal. He found the old cottage where Holly had stayed, still filled with her belongings, the scent of her perfume lingering in the stale air. On the desk her journal lay open, the final page smeared with what he could only assume was blood. The map she had found was there too, marked with the ominous symbol of the Kian serpent. Julian traced the lines of the map with trampling fingers, feeling the weight of dread settle over him. He had to see it for himself. The journey to the garden was no easier for Julian than it had been for Holly. The forest seemed to close in around him as he followed the twisted path, the trees whispering in a language he couldn't understand. By the time he reached the rusted gate, night had fallen, and the moon hung low in the sky, casting long, eerie shadows over the hollow where the garden lay. The gate was ajar, as if inviting him in. Julian hesitated, a chill running down his spine as he stared into the dark, foreboding space beyond. But the thought of Holly of finding out what had happened to her pushed him forward. He stepped into the garden, the gate clanged shut behind him with a finality that made his heart skip a beat. The garden was eerily quiet, the only sound the faint ticking of unseen clockwork. Julian walked cautiously, the light of his lantern flickering as if the very air sought to snuff it out. The plants loomed around him, monstrous in their fusion of organic and mechanical parts, their metallic components glinting in the moonlight. He could feel their eyes on him, the flowers and vines tracking his every move, but he forced himself to focus. He found her not far from the center of the garden, her body entwined in the thorny embrace of the clockwork vines. Holly's face was pale, her skin cold, but what horrified Julian the most was her expression, her eyes were wide open, frozen in an eternal scream, her mouth twisted in agony. 
The pants had drained her, the metallic roots embedded deep in her flesh, feeding on her essence. Grief and rage welled up within Julian, but before he could react, the statue at the garden center stirred once more. Its eyes flared to life, the green orbs glowing with a malevolent light as it turned its gaze upon him. Julian stumbled back, his mind racing with terror. This was no ordinary garden, this was a living, breathing entity, a monstrous creation that fed on the living. The statue's voice rasped out, a terrible sound of grinding gears and rusted metal. As the garden hungers, it repeated. The plants around him began to move, their clockwork mechanisms ticking faster as they reached for him. But Julian was prepared. He pulled a small vial from his coat, the liquid inside a deep, iridescent blue. It was a concoction of his own design, something he had created for the most desperate of situations, a mixture that could disrupt the delicate balance of organic and mechanical life. He smashed the vial against the ground, and the liquid spread quickly, soaking into the soil. The effect was immediate. The garden recoiled, the plants thrashing as the liquid seeped into their roots. The statue staggered, its eyes flickering as its clockwork innards began to seize up. The vines loosened their grip on Holly's body, and the air was filled with the sound of metal grinding against metal as the garden convulsed. But Julian knew it wouldn't last. He grabbed Holly's lifeless body and ran, the plants hissing and snapping at his heels as he fled. The garden screamed, a terrible, inhuman sound that echoed through the hollow, but Julian didn't stop. He burst through the gate, which slammed shut behind him with a deafening bang, and kept running until the forest swallowed him whole. It wasn't until he reached the edge of the wood that he collapsed, Holly's body cradled in his arms, tears streaming down his face. He had failed her. The garden had claimed another victim, and though he had escaped with his life, he knew that he would never be free of the horrors he had witnessed. The garden would wait. It would repair itself, rebuild, and one day it would hunger again. And when it did, it would call out to the curious, the desperate, the unwary those who would come seeking answers only to find themselves consumed by the nightmare within. Julia knew this with a certainty that chilled him to the bone. The clockwork garden was more than a place. It was a curse, a malevolent force that had been lying in wait for centuries, and it would not rest until it was satisfied. In the days that followed, Julian buried Holly in a secluded spot far from the reach of the garden's vines. He left the Isle of Wight, vowing never to speak of what he had seen, but the memory of that terrible place haunted him, a dark shadow that followed him wherever he went. And so the legend of the Clockwork Garden endured, a tale of terror passed down through generations. The garden still lay hidden deep within the woods of the Isle of Wight, its rusted gate sealed shut, its clockwork heart ticking softly, patiently. For the garden knew that it would not be long before another soul ventured too close, drawn by the promise of secrets and forbidden knowledge. And when they did, the garden would awaken once more, its hunger insatiable, its thirst for blood eternal. The clockwork garden waited, and it would wait as long as it took. Thank you for listening, I hope you enjoyed this story. Please don't forget to like, and even better like and subscribe. Thank you very much, and I hope you have had or have a great day.